Welcome to WTDC 17 here in Buenos Aires in Argentina, where I'm very pleased to be joined in the studio today by Bernadette Lewis, who is Secretary General of the Caribbean Telecommunications Union. Bernadette, thank you for joining us in the studio today. Thank you for the opportunity. The Caribbean has recently experienced devastating hurricanes, and uh, I wanted to ask you how crucial are ICTs in assisting countries to implement disaster risk reduction measures? ICTs are critical to the process in terms of the preparation, uh, even as the disaster is happening and in the recovery. Um, we have been contemplating the role of, of amateur radio, for example. They have been a staple, a significant element of the communication uh, that takes place some during and immediately thereafter. And I think in the Caribbean, we need to cultivate a new generation of ham operators. I, I, I don't know if this is the situation across the world, but we absolutely have to do that. We have to look at the whole issue of uh, acquisition of, of satellite imagery, right? So that you have an idea of what is there before and immediately thereafter, we must have you know, the images that you could see. And, and usually the, the, for the countries that have been devastated, the, the, the contrast is stark, and you could actually see where has been devastated and where you need to deploy resources. And, and that is one aspect of it. Of course, GIS uh, systems also in that mix would help tremendously. Um, I noted one of the, uh, after the passage of the first uh, storm, Uber, uh, one of the leaders in the Caribbean you know, remarked, well, we weathered the storm very well, uh, but not realizing that one of the islands had been completely devastated. So communication immediately thereafter has to be in place. Uh, if you have the systems for communications, they have to be exercised on a periodic basis. So you know your satellite phones have been charged and ready and waiting and in a secure facility. These are some of the things that we have to uh, pay particular attention to. And the last thing is, yes, many of our seven of our 20 countries, member countries, have been devastated. And we understand the urgency to rebuild. But the devastation is an opportunity for rebuilding sustainably, for um, rethinking what you've lost and what will survive the next year? Because the region, the natural disasters we, are, uh, we face on an annual basis, the hurricanes, that is, that's a part of Caribbean life, yes? And you may be spared this year, but there's a good chance that next year or the following year or five years down the road, you will face it again. And are you going to rebuild what you've lost? Or are you going to build infrastructure that is uh, designed and constructed to withstand or at least mitigate the extent of the damage? And those are, are the sort of things that we think about. Talking about challenges, I wanted to ask you, what are some of the challenges facing the Caribbean region in integrating ICTs into socioeconomic development? Well, the challenges are attracting investment. The Caribbean countries, typically, we have very weak economies. You know, we are typically dependent on, on tourism and, and, and agriculture. Um, very small countries. You're talking about populations from 5,000, yes, uh, 30,000. The majority of the CTU member countries have less than 200,000 people. Right? It's very, very small markets. So it is, in order to attract uh, investment, you would want, you know, p the investors, potential investors are interested in pan-Caribbean operations. It makes no sense going into one little tiny island. You're not, it, it's, a, it's, not a, it's not a good business uh, uh, case. So, but the challenge has been that across the region, the countries are very diverse different regulatory regimes, different bureaucratic processes. This adds to the cost of doing business. And consequently, there's a, a real need across the region 
to harmonize uh, the, the policy frameworks, the legislation, legislative frameworks, uh, the regulatory frameworks. And this needs to happen as a, as a matter of urgency. Um, the CTU, one of our mandates is harmonization. And we've done a lot of work in that area, the area of spectrum management. We have a spectrum management uh, strategic plan for the Caribbean. And uh, in 2017, in February, our heads, the Caribbean heads of government, they agreed to a roadmap for the establishment of a single ICT space. And this, I think this project is going to give the impetus that is necessary in terms of harmonizing across the region. And of course, that would put us in a much better position to attract investment in ICT. Now, we've got a limited time in this interview, so I'm going to ask you a few quick fire questions here. The theme of WTDC is uh, ICTs for SDGs. How relevant is this theme for the Caribbean region? It's absolutely, absolutely relevant. I, as I said, we are about to embark on the establishment of a single ICT space um, in which, as I mentioned before, the harmonization of, of the, the policy, legislation, and regulations, and of course, the um, establishment of robust broadband infrastructure, right? Frameworks that enable governments and, and people to capitalize on the potential of, of, of information and communication technologies. And of course, we're looking at sustainability as a whole in this whole concept of a single ICT space. What concrete actions would you like to see come out of this WTDC 17 conference? Well, I would certainly like to, to know, to see that the, the issue of emergency, uh, ICT in emergency and disaster situations, I definitely want to see that. That is going forward as one of the proposals from our region. Uh, the other thing I, I want is to speak to maybe something more of an administrative nature. The Development Bureau has been a one-stop shop for countries, small island developing states, you know, landlocked countries. I can't speak for, to that in, in, for the Caribbean. But the BDT has been a tremendous supporting, enabling uh, organization. Uh, which, with, with which we, the CTU works very closely, and we would not want to see the role or the scope of the work that the BDT does. We would not want to see that diminished. What do you think is needed to spur greater investment in ICT networks in the Caribbean? Uh, as I mentioned before, uh, you want to make sure that there is a, a level playing field, and as I mentioned before, the, the, if we could harmonize our bu bureaucratic processes across the region, that is going to help tremendously. And what are the regulatory hurdles, do you think, of that harmonization? Um, I think it's, it's a case of political will. <laughs> the, the will to do it. It's not an impossible task, but uh, we have to recognize that as tiny, tiny countries, we cannot stand alone. We have to work together. We have to integrate. And that is what the, the whole thrust of the single ICT space uh, it, it's going to do. It's going to lay the, that digital platform to facilitate integration, to give life to our Caribbean single market and economy. So that is, that is, that is my thing, the political will. Of course, this is not unique. It is a global phenomenon we would really want to have our countries working more closely together. Finally, there was a great focus this morning on women and ICTs. Mm -hmm. I wanted to ask you, how can uh, women be encouraged to uh, duplicate the success that seems to be coming through in professional leadership and women taking on uh, uh, more senior roles in the ICT sector? I th think that the now women who reach leadership leadership positions, they work 50 times as hard, right? It is not an easy, it is not an easy journey to the top of any organization, yes? And I think they need to be respected. The sacrifices they, they make have to be recognized, right? And uh, the old boys clubs are very strong, and, and you know that, <laughs> yes? And um, we, Women need to support each other more, right? And really 
to show, be examples to the next generation of young women that are coming up that it is possible. It is possible. And things like uh, we, we have to be advocates for equal pay for the same work. You know, those are things that we have to speak out. And I'm using this opportunity to speak out about those things. Um, and that women, I, 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 the, the point of the matter is any organization with a balance of men and women, you find you need them both. Yes, you need them both for a holistic approach. We think men and women think differently. And it is important to have both of them. And uh, in this age, and especially in the Caribbean, I may have said this before, the majority of people coming out of universities are women. Yes? Uh, it's, it's, it, we are changing the, the it's, it, we are capable, we are able, and we are up to the task, right? And uh, we really have to keep hammering at that glass ceiling to make sure that there's, that orifice is there for younger people coming up after us to reach to the top. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you.